Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 5. In this tutorial we're going to bring in our first weapon, we're going to animate that weapon and we're also going to expand this area just a little bit. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So we're going to start off with a simple pistol as a weapon. Why a pistol? It's no simple object to deal with. And once we have the mechanics nailed down for, let's say, a pistol, we can easily adapt that to various different weapon types. So I am going to create a new folder in the asset section. Right click, create folder, and we'll call this weapons. So any weapon that we bring into the game will be inside this folder. So I'm going to drag and drop this pistol folder into Unity down here. And as always, you can get this on the website. If you head over there, download an assets FPS and go to tutorial number five, you can download it there for free. Just make sure you unzip it before you bring it into Unity. You may end up with this error down here. Don't worry, that's nothing important at all. Basically, that's just saying that the files that relate to the original build of the weapon inside its 3D modeling software can't be found, but we don't need them anyway, because this is Unity not a 3D modeling application. Anyway, let's bring our pistol into the game. So if we go into our folder, you'll see a couple of different options. We want this M9 right here. Drag and drop into Unity and it is fairly large as we can see, but it's gonna serve its purpose well enough. Let's reduce the size of this weapon and play around with it a little bit and see if we can get it looking a bit more, well, weapony, I guess. Is that the right word to use? It is the right word now. So firstly, before we actually shrink it, let's undo the uh, material there so we can see everything. We can see that it's not attached here in the albedo. And the reason it's not is because I want to kind of illustrate that even with models, you can still attach textures to them rather than just like when we did before with a cube. So let's take this text 0009 underscore one and place it here. You can see, Excellent, it's applied it. Let's now create a, a normal map for it. So let's hold control, press D to duplicate. And let's rename this with an underscore N. And yeah, I'm sure you're way ahead of me now, guys. We just need to set it as that normal map, click apply. If you want it as a grayscale, you absolutely can. It just depends again, how you want your game to look. So we could increase that there. Let's make it uh, very metallic because it is a bit of a gun. Uh, we'll make it too smooth. Um, that should do the trick well enough. Uh, let's change it to a grayscale and just see how it looks. Oh, it looks very, very used, doesn't it? Okay, maybe we could use that to our advantage. Let's, um, let's, let's see what happens if we change the color to white and reduce the normal map back to one. How's that look? Okay, do you know what? I think we'll stick with that. I think that looks okay. So next thing to do is let's shrink this M9 down. Let's have 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And let's bring it down into our scene a little more and click on game view. In fact, let's press play and just see how that gun looks floating in the scene pretty big. Okay, so it looks like it is still a bit big. So let's shrink it even more and then let's couple it to the player itself. So let's have 0 0.05, 0 0.05 and 0 0.05. Next thing we need to do is we need to attach it to the first person character. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create some more objects on first person character, just kind of keep things intact and keep them neat and tidy. So on first person character, right click, Create empty, and let's rename this to weapons. And then I'm going to drag this M9 onto the weapon. So you can see it flowing down like folders, you know, in a, a directory. And you can see that that contains even more objects. Now I am going to rename this to just pistol. And at the moment, you will notice that it's not really done anything else. It is attached to our first person controller, but if we press play, we will no longer be able to see it in the scene. 
The reason we're no longer able to see it in the scene is it is attached to our game object. So it moves with us anywhere we go. So if I go to the scene view, you can see that it's now over here because it is stuck in this position in our character. So if we move this pistol to dead center of our first person character, which weapons already is, so we need to move pistol to center, so zero, 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 you should be able to see that that's where it is. Now, currently it is facing outwards and our character is facing inwards, which is towards the left currently. That means we're gonna to have to rotate our pistol around. And now we're going to move it forward just slightly, probably about there. And let's click on the game view. So now we can see our pistol right there. And if we press play, wherever we move, we should see the pistol right in front of us. That means all we have to do now is align where our pistol would be. So if we rotate ourselves around, move ourselves up, so the pistol looks like it's going to have to come down slightly and probably to the right a little bit. And if we click the game view, we can see how much of an impact that is now having. Do you remember in the first tutorial when I said you can uncouple sections? Well, let's do that right now. Let's take game, uncouple it and place it over here on the right hand side. And if we bring this together, we can see this is the scene view, this is the game view, and we can see ourselves moving the gun around in the game view. Now that position should be, I think, fairly decent. I think we can deal with that. You should be able to see the gun just kind of moving around in the scene view. But if we focus on the game view, that looks like it is functioning as normal. So, I want to really bring home the fact that you guys should be concentrating a lot more on your presentation at this point. I don't think that's perfect as it is, but it will do for all intents and purposes for this tutorial. You take the time to work a little more and get that weapon in the correct position or in a position that you are most comfortable with. So next thing I want to do is just bring the game view back up here. And we are going to animate this weapon. So the animation we're going to create is a firing animation, i.e. let's say we've right, uh, sorry, we've left clicked and our weapon should be firing. We're going to create that animation now. So let's go to our assets folder up here, right click, create, folder, animations. And in this folder, we're gonna create another folder just to keep everything neat and tidy. And this one is going to be weapons and in there we're going to create an animation now if you have this animation tab here that's great if you haven't remember from the first tutorial when i said this is how you get an animation tab well just a recap three dots there add tab and animation now we're going to animate this pistol right here so make sure we have clicked the pistol and you'll see down in this section here, to begin animating pistol, create an animator and an animation clip. And all we do is click on create. And now let's create this animation, give it a name. We'll call it fire pistol and save. And you'll be given all of this down here. Now, a lot of this isn't totally relevant right now. I think the main thing to note is uh, the dope sheet here and you'll need to press record what that will do is it will start recording whatever we do to the weapon it won't necessarily record us moving the weapon around now it just means that we can set key nodes along here to represent an animation so keyframe zero is the very start of the animation and what we want to do is make sure that the rotation and position are in this exact position now as they are as it stands so basically these need to be set at the very first keyframe so what i usually do is i just go 0 0.327 i retype those numbers over so minus 0 0.713 and 1.5 with a rotation if it's set to 000 i just like to put one and then reset to zero and the reason I do this is simply because for my own sanity, I know I've set those numbers. So I know that they are perfectly right. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to zoom in a little bit. 
And basically when we fire, it kind of recoils a bit. So it's that recoil animation that we want to create here. And a recoil is going to be created by it coming backwards a bit, down just a little bit, but the front comes up. So we rotate on the X just a little. So that means we're going to go to probably frame 10. So this is all worked in frames. So 60 frames is going to be one whole second here, unless you've got something else set up in the settings. Again, if you're new to Unity, you probably won't. It will still be 60 frames a second. All of what we're doing here is in 60 frames a second. And we need to set what the halfway animation point is going to be. So we're going to recoil it back. So we're going to move the weapon back ever so slightly, down ever so slightly, and rotate on the X. So the weapon ends up recoiled like that. So it will give the impression that we have fired our weapon and now it needs to come back to its initial position. So we need to establish how long it's going to take for us to fire one shot. So at the moment we are on frame 10, which is one sixth of a second. So let's go to frame uh, 30 now. So it'll take half a second in total. So this frame is now going to be our end position, which is going to be identical to the start position. So it's kind of a looping animation. So let's set the rotation back to zero on the X and we need to reset the X, sorry, not the X, the Z and Y. And if I remember correctly, Z was 1.5. And let's double check what the Y position was. So what we can do is we can click up here on the very first keyframe and we can see it is negative 0.713. So we can go to frame 30 here and we can say, negative 0 0.713 and now those two keyframes will be identical with that firing in the middle so now if we press the record button once again that stops our recording we've recorded our animation of our gun firing and recoiling and going back to normal so if we press play we'll see that occur constantly okay so if we were firing our weapon, this is currently what it would look like. That's okay, but let's modify this a little more now. So I'm not happy with how slow that's firing. So I'm going to press the record button. I'm going to take this keyframe and I'm going to move it to there. And all I've done is hold down the left mouse button and dragged that keyframe to there. And now this keyframe I want to bring to about there. So I've shortened the animation. So I'm also not happy with how far down the weapon isn't going. I think it needs to come down a little more, back a little more, and rotate it on the X just a little more. And now press the record button once again. And we have modified that animation again. So now we should have a bit more recoil and fire a bit quicker. Yep, yeah, I think that's okay. Again, this is probably something that you should take a little bit more time with. <clears throat> Don't uh, rush it like I am. As I always say with a lot of these tutorials, I show you the mechanics of how to do it. I kind of steam through it a little bit, whereas you should take the time. I teach you, you take the time to learn and create it even better than what I do. So, this pistol now, we need to turn off loop time. The reason we turn off loop time is because we don't want it to constantly loop over and over. We just want to, it to be able to fire whenever we tell it that we're firing the weapon. So in the meantime, before we get into the next tutorial, what you guys should do is really refine how your pistol is. Take the time to build it, uh, make the animation better, uh, cooler, you know, like I say, you should really take a lot more time than what I do. So before we finish, let's expand this area just a little more so we've got a bit more of a playable area to walk in. And all I've done there is just duplicate the floor. Remember, hold control, press D. I'm snapping it outwards. Let's do the same with these two walls. I've held control there and I've selected two objects. Control D to duplicate. Let's bring that to there. And let's, um, let's make a corner here. So one cool trick that we can use, rather than try and get this wall to align here, 
I'm actually going to increase the size of this wall on the X. I'm going to set it as 10. And then I'm going to move it this way and align it to its original position. So rather than create a new wall, we have just duplicated this into a square and it automatically flows into the next section. So let's put this here. Let's create another wall. And already you can see that this area is growing quite rapidly. Uh, I'm going to duplicate the floor again. Let's bring it down here. I'm going to duplicate this wall, put it there and once again. And there is a point to uh, all of this at the moment. You'll see momentarily how this is going to affect our game design. But you can see that all I'm doing right now is just duplicating various objects, moving them into position for different purposes. So if I press play, you can see that we're not just here anymore. We now have a bigger area to play around in, which is really cool. So, like I say, a lot of the design of this level is going to be based around um, better looking things. At the moment, we're just trying to create an area that gives us uh, playability. So next tutorial, what I want to do is I want to start some C sharp coding and we're going to create the ability to fire our weapon. So like I say, we've created that animation and if we loop it, it plays constantly, but we only want to play that animation of firing a weapon when we actually left click on the mouse. So that is the plan for the next tutorial. Until then, thanks very much for watching guys.